Another offseason has come and gone without the lack of Mets owner Steve Cohen taking baseball by storm and being the topic of many conversations. Back before the 2021 season, Cohen and star shortstop Francisco Lindor would agree to a $341 million contract. Before the 2022 season, Cohen and Max Scherzer agreed to a massive three-year deal worth $130 million while also inking guys like Starling Marte and Marcana to deals. People were already freaking out over these two Mets off seasons alone, understandably so. It was refreshing for Mets fans to see an owner invest greatly into their team. Over 60% of my watch time is from non-subscribers, so make sure to hit that button along with the bell for notifications. The Mets went on to play sixth in attendance in 2022. Why is that? Well, because Cohen's spending an investment into his team helped lead the Mets to a fun 101 win season. As for this offseason, Cohen's third while owning the team, if you thought what he did the first two years was wild, you weren't ready for the offseason heading into 2023. Cohen looked back at the deals prior to 2021 and 2022 and said, hold my gold. Jacob deGrom was the first domino to drop, surprisingly leaving and heading to Texas to join the Rangers. I mean, I guess it wasn't that surprising, considering there were rumors and reports he wanted to play there on top of the fact that he's just a low-key guy to begin with and Texas would suit him better than New York anyway. But that's still a huge loss. I mean, Jacob deGrom? I understand the injury concerns, but the man is literally the best pitcher not just in baseball right now, but one of the best pitchers of all time when healthy. So what did Cohen go out and do? Sign 2022 American League Cy Young Award winner Justin Verla Lander and Japanese pitcher Kodai Senga. Now, these aren't necessarily moves that are set in stone to work out. Verlander is entering his age 40 season, and there were recent reports of Senga having an iffy physical before his deal went through. So, yeah, these contracts have the potential to end up being nightmares, but they also can end up being quite the opposite. Whatever it ends up as, you can't say Cohen didn't do what he could and spend what he spent to piece this rotation together post DeGrom. A big part of the Mets offseason heading into 2023 was keeping the players they already had, the big impact players, with Edwin Diaz for five years, over 100 million, and Brandon Nimmo for eight years, 162 million, being the two biggest names staying put. There was of course the whole Carlos Correa subplot, but at the end of the day, Steve Cohen is putting a ton of money into his team, and it's great to see. It's unfortunate that not every owner can operate like that. Rockies owner Dick Monfort recently made some comments that actually criticized the San Diego Padres, another team with an owner who spends a lot, saying that he doesn't 100% agree with what the Padres are doing. There have also been reports that other owners throughout Major League Baseball are not big fans of Steve Cohen and the way he operates, and think that his success of spending makes them look bad. Well, just recently, Cohen fired back at any owners who feel that way, saying, quote, I've heard what everyone else has heard, that they're not happy with me. I hear things from people who are maybe more neutral, that they're taking a lot of heat from their fans. I kind of look at that like, you're looking at the wrong person. They're putting it on me. Maybe they need to look more at themselves. I'm not responsible for how other teams run their clubs. I'm really not. That's not my job. And there are disparities in baseball. We know that to be true. I'm following the rules. They set the rules down. I'm following them. End quote. Cohen, of course, did not call out any specific teams, but we know the type of teams and owners who the message was likely meant for. The Oakland A's are set to have the lowest payroll in baseball this year at around $40 million. Meanwhile, the owner, John Fisher, is worth about $2.5 billion. The Orioles are set to have the second lowest payroll at around $45 million, with the Cincinnati Reds coming in with the fifth lowest payroll in baseball. Those three teams finished bottom 10 in attendance last year. Going back to the Padres for a second, their owner, Peter Seidler, is great for the city of San Diego and the team's fans. Seidler's Padres are right at the top in payroll spending, while also being right at the top in attendance. At their fan fest recently that took place at Peco Park, it was packed to the brim to the point where they had to start slowly letting people in at a time because of it being at max capacity. The hype for the teams like the Padres and Mets is insane. The hype for the teams like the A's, like the Pirates or the Reds is just not there. As an owner, investing a lot into your team and buying good players helps build more hype around your franchise, brings more people to the ballpark, and wins games. Who knew? What a concept. Steve Cohen is doing what he's allowed to do, which is spend a lot of money on baseball players for his baseball team to help them win and get the fans excited. If other owners have a problem with that, well, Cohen said it perfectly. They need to look in the mirror and realize that they're the problem not Steve Cohen. Spend more money on players and invest in a winner. If you don't want to spend as much on players or feel that you can't afford it, 
then sell the team. Simple. Let me know what you think. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.